Council and Universal Peace Organization have decided to host uh, celebrations under the theme Peace, which is different from the government's theme, which is Be the Legacy. Now, SABC reporter Zimkita Maklinana is on standby for us. Uh, Zimkita, a very good morning to you once again. Just tell us uh, what's the latest from Mbezo. Welcome back, uh, Blaine, to the Eastern Cape. We are now coming to you live from um, Tata. And earlier this morning, we saw a number of dignitaries arriving ahead of the much-anticipated birthday celebrations that are expected to take place at Mvejo Great Place tomorrow. There's a big dome marquee uh, that is standing there waiting to host more than 500 guests tomorrow. There's going to be a lot of entertainment, Blaine. Uh, and if you are not attending the event, you'll surely be missing out because uh, Madiba's grandson, Manda Mandela, says uh, it's, it's time to celebrate because if Madiba were to be alive uh, tomorrow, he was going to turn 100. And now, even though he's no longer here with us, uh, those who are here must continue to celebrate. And this evening, we are going to be uh, hearing a, le a memorial lecture that will be done by Professor L. O. Mulumba. Um, he's got a lot of experience when it comes to things to do with corruption, uh, law, and how to... how issues of governance and now we're just going to have a conversation with him as to how South Africa is doing when we're talking about governance because remember Madiba fought for us to be free and how is that freedom being uh, taken into consideration in South Africa very good morning and a warm welcome it's a day before the big day everyone is happy and I'm sure you are also here to celebrate let's first talk about the celebrations how are you planning to celebrate the life and times of Dada Madiba I think the way to celebrate an icon in the tradition of Nelson Mandela is to remember the lessons that we can draw from his life and that is what I intend to do particularly when one looks at Africa as it stands today with many opportunities being lost to corruption and civil strife and I think that Madiba would have loved to see a prosperous Africa, an Africa that is free from conflict. So I'm going to meditate and reflect about his ideals. Let's talk about the issue because South Africa is very uh, ha is having many problems when it comes to corruption. Uh, people who are in government are um, there are allegations of corruption. Uh, what do you think they need to do to emulate the values of Dada Madiba because the people that are on the ground suffer as a result of these corruption activities? Corruption is a cancer that must be fought and I think that one of the things that President Mandela did was to demonstrate that one can be in public service on the basis of moral rectitude and we as a people must emulate that. South Africa like many African countries has been suffering because of a few individuals who upon being given the opportunity to serve use those opportunities for personal benefit. But it's important to say that the new administration of President Ramaphosa is now moving in what I consider to be the right direction, sending an unequivocal message to the corrupt that there are no sacred cows, that if you use your office for personal benefit, you will be arraigned in court, and I hope that the courts will also do the right thing, not only to send them to jail, but to ensure that their ill-gotten wealth is claimed. It must be recognized that corruption is what undermines the growth of nations and countries such as South Africa and many other African countries don't realize their potential because of these thieves. We must no longer use sanitized words to refer to thieves. They are just common thieves. And what we ought to do is to ensure that we deny them the oxygen that they use to breathe. That is the ill-gotten wealth. And if Af South Africa provides the leadership, remember that this is the second largest economy in Africa, a country with potential, a country with men and women who, if they put their act together would be a one trillion dollar GDP economy in the next 10 years. My joy How is that movement is taking place. Let's now talk about young people. Are we responsible enough as young people? Are we taking pride in the democracy that we have today? Young people are in what I call double jeopardy. 
they crave and long for countries where they have the opportunities to invent and to innovate. But those opportunities are few and far between. They are therefore blaming the generations ahead of them. But I want to say that we are co-authors of our misfortune. There is a sense in which we can blame the success, the generations ahead of us, but there is also a sense in which opportunities can be created. What we ought to do is to have faith in Africa. I do not believe that the opportunities outside of Africa. How is it that the Chinese see opportunities in Africa and we don't see them? How is it that the French and everybody else think that Africa is Shangri-La Shangri or gold or El Dorado, the land of gold, or as we say here, the land of Igoli? And yet we don't. So in my view, the young people must enter into an arena of self-reflection and demand of political leadership that we must get what we deserve. And this country has demonstrated it. In 1969 in Sharpville, they demonstrated it. In 1976 in Soweto, they demonstrated it. They demonstrated it when they were fighting the apartheid regime. The, the last vestige of apartheid regime is the economic battle. And that is the battle that must be won if we are to regain our dignity as a people. Thank you very much for your time. Well, Blaine, you are surely going to be missing out on this lecture that will be taking place tonight here uh, at Oward Tambo Hall. I know we will be missing out on uh, former President uh, Obama's lecture, but there's going to be a lot of activities even here in Tata, where Madiba comes from. And uh, I saw Zahara when I was making my way into here. Zahara is here. She's going to be part of those people that are going to entertain the young people when we celebrate a hundred years of of Madiba. It's back to you in Johannesburg. Stop rubbing it in, Zumkita. <laughs> I am indeed jealous of you guys down in the Eastern Cape. Zumkita Manglingnana, live for us in the Eastern Cape. Thank you very much indeed. Now